Okay, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Thursday, August 19th, 2021 meeting at the Public Art Commission. We're going to start with roll call. Commissioner Miyagi? Here. Vice Chair Gordon? Present. Commissioner Waltak? Present. And Chair Taylor? Present. Okay, thank you, everybody. Next, we have any agenda changes, requests, or deletions? I don't believe we do. Okay, any oral communications? Let me check. We currently have no attendees. Okay, and this is gonna be a pretty good meeting then. <laughs> um, next, we have approval of minutes um, for the <coughs> meeting on June 17th, 2021. Can I get a motion? So moved. Wonderful. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. And our roll call, Commissioner Waltek. Uh, approved. I don't know what I'd say. <laughs> approved. That's perfect. Um, Vice Chair Miyagi. Oh, but sorry. I'm looking at two different things. Sorry. Commissioner Miyagi. <laughs> yes. Thank you. And Vice Chair Gordon. Yes. Wonderful. And Chair Taylor, yes, I approve. Okay. Um, I saw Sinia somewhere, but she yeah. disappeared. So okay. I guess we'll continue up. Sinia, yeah. hello. Welcome. I guess we'll keep going and then she'll join us. Okay. Hi, Sinia. Should she be part of the roll call for the, um, the last agenda item for the minute approval? Yes. Okay, Sonia, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hi, okay, I'm mute. we just did a roll call to approve the minutes um, from uh, June seventeenth. Can you? Um, we was already I, actually was I at in in the June seventeenth meeting? I think I missed the last meeting for some reason. Okay, that is correct. Okay, yeah, so I won't be okay. able to approve those minutes okay. anyway. And Thank then you. I didn't, I'll do this as a second one. And then, so that's actually good. The, um, we'll also approve the minutes from the PAC retreat on okay. August 13th, 2021. So can I get a motion? I move. Thank you. Can I get a second? Second. Wonderful. And a roll call. Commissioner Miyagi. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Waltak. Yes. Commissioner Shen. Yes. And Vice Chair Gordon? Yes. And Chair Taylor? Yes. Okay, great. So now we're gonna move on to staff comments and Nadia, take it away. Wonderful, um, thank you. So just bear with me, I will uh, share my screen. Do you see it? It's so fun. Fantastic. Um, so we um, have a few um, exciting updates related to um, our latest micrograms uh, to share with you. Um, so um, stop by Mitchell Park to check out and play Alta Clef, uh, a public piano originally found in disrepair and now restored and refurbished um, by um, a GAN graduate, um, Arunim Ar um, Agarwal, and his uh, fellow collaborators over this course of summer. Uh, for the pleasure of Palo Alto community members. So right now you can see the piano. It's um, sited at uh, Mitchell Park um, in the trellis area uh, where you know you can find some picnic tables. Um, it's uh, tuned. Um, a lot of people stop by to enjoy and play it or just um, listen to other play. It. Uh, it's wonderful. Um, so we um, anticipate this uh, public piano to be on display at Mitchell Park um, through the end of September. Um, Nadia, what happens to the piano after it's removed? I believe um, the artist is now um, um, looking for its um, next uh, temporary or permanent um, home. Uh, he's actually reaching out to um, regional local organizations um, and also private citizens to see if he can um, find a new home for the piano and also um, um, Palo Alto School um, District. 
So we really hope that somebody will want this wonderful instrument. The next image you're looking at, um, so a couple of artists, uh, Daryl Diekman uh, reinterprets the iconic diversity of Palo Alto architecture as a series of birdhouses built by the community. Uh, you can now view uh, 35 unique birdhouses exhibited at the town and country shopping center, suite um, 20, um, now and through August 31st. And then the exhibit will be displayed at Mitchell Park Library. I believe it will, the installation will, um, the exhibit will start on, on September 8th and will remain there through the end of September. It's really wonderful. Um, some other couple of artists participated in this exhibit and um, also added um, some of their uh, micrograms. You can see uh, one of um, the, uh, one of pages from uh, Danielle Archambault's um, uh, book that she was um, um, commissioned through uh, the microgrant, um, Smiling Through the Masks, um, Elizabeth Bennett's um, whimsical um, um, traffic cone um, that she used to create her large scale um, Game of Cones installation that was um, exhibited so very recently in one of um, Palo Alto Parks. Uh, also, we have a couple of more um, announcements. Um, so, don't Nadia, can I just ask you a quick question? How did we get connected with Town and Country? I think that's great. Do you know if actually the artist... the, actually the artist did the outreach outreach and uh, was successful in um, securing one of the uh, vacant storefronts um, at Town and Country. Uh, we really appreciate um, our community partners for this generous gift of their uh, space and really hope that they'll be open to um, you know future installations especially by our palo alto you know own um, copyright artists uh, a couple of more announcements um so um Next Saturday, um, August 28th, um, 5 to 7 p.m., don't miss a free live concert by the incredible accordion player Andre Thierry and his Zydeco um, Magic Band. So put your dancing shoes on um, because um, his magical, soulful rhythms will definitely get you moving. And another event happening on the same day um, will be um, hosted by a Stanford anthropologist, um, Kari um, Costanzo and um, uh, Kabrile artist, um, uh, Saba Shear. Um, they received <clears throat> an art lift micro grant uh, for the body um, mapping workshop that they will be hosting on Saturday, August 28th and between 10 uh, in the morning, 1 p.m. at uh, Saba's um, Coverly Studio. Um, it's Studio F7, Coverly Community Center. So these are the updates. Um, staff comments for today. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And um, moving on to the next um, agenda item. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Nadia. So as Nadia just mentioned, we're going to move on to two action items and then a non-action item. Um, so our first two action items is our two-year work plan and our Midtown Poetry murals. So Nadia, take it away. Sure. I was actually going to um, share the priorities that the commissioners um, drafted um, at the um, retreat last week and congratulations everybody on the awesome work that everybody did and contributed um, to the, um, this brainstorming creative process. Okay, sharing my screen. There we go. Okay, I hope you can see right now. Um, so these are the three ongoing priorities. They um, are largely based on um, the priorities that the commission uh, worked out and approved last year. Um, I, the commission determined that um, those priorities are um, still very, um, you know, timely and accurate and um, in line of, um, in line with um, the work plan um, ongoing work plan. So I will actually um, 
share the microphone with you, um, the chair and the uh, members of the commission to discuss um, any um, edits if needed and if everything looks good, approve the priorities. Wonderful, thank you. So when we had our retreat, I really made sure that we could spend some time hashing the priorities and work plan out just so we don't have to rehash a lot of the information today during our meeting. Um, but I'm sure as we sleep on things, sometimes ideas come up and um, I just wanna double check to see if anybody has any questions, thoughts, comments they wanna make before we um, approve these wonderful priorities for the coming year. Um, yeah, I'm reading it over again and I'm just looking at the first priority. Um, the word encourage, the verb encourage, if you read encourage with belong, it sounds a little bit weird. So develop public art that encourages playing. So that, that part is fine, but encourages belonging. Sounds a little bit weird. Encouraging community participation, that sounds fine. And I'm, so I'm wondering if there's a better verb for it. And I'm wondering if promote is the, or foster or something that, you know, a verb that will work with all three, you know, both both gerunds, right? Like both playing and belonging. I think foster is a good one. Okay. So instead of encourages, um, fosters? Yeah, because, yeah, right. Like, so foster, I mean, I think fosters works with playing and community and belonging and fosters community com participation. So it, it, I just want to make sure we pick the right verb. And then you could probably take out the second that then. So it just says fosters playing, belonging, community participation and promote shared experiences around. Yeah, you probably, now that you changed it to fosters, I think you could take out that. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, just one more nitpick. Um, if we um, if we um, move the verbs, so it's promotes playing, belonging, community, and fosters share experiences. Would that sound better or would that sound worse? So using both verbs, but just like you know, kind of uh, um, move their placement. Any thoughts, people? I think it's so. I mean, I think either one sounds okay to me. But any other thoughts? Hmm. Yeah, I think I think either one works. This this might be a little smoother. I, I can go I can go either way. I, I don't want to create I, I don't want to outsmart myself here. Um because like thought like I, I wonder what foster really I mean they they kind of both have adjacent meetings. Right. Um what do you think, Lauren? Yeah, I I, I love that um the using fosters um and it doesn't really matter to me where it is except I think you're right promotes works better with playing and community participation um I'd leave it as it is right now okay because I think we had to adopt it yeah because encourage encourages was just kind of sounded a little weird with belonging encourages okay. belonging but promotes belonging well fosters belonging I, I can go either way I like it. And I really like the second one, develop public art projects that will continue to advance cultural inclusion and social and racial equity. Yeah, it's a classic. We don't have to tinker with that. No. I'm happy with the three priorities. Anyone else? Thank you for wordsmithing the first one. Absolutely. So um edit it and save as 
been discussed. Thank you. Great. So can we move to approve our uh, PAC first? Wonderful. Can I get a second? I can. Wonderful. And then we'll do our lovely roll call. Commissioner Shen? Uh, yes. Commissioner Waltak? Yes. Um, Vice Chair Gordon? Yes. Commissioner Miyagi? Yes. And Chair Taylor? Yes. All right, that was an easy one. Thank you, everybody, I'm excited. Okay, so we'll move on to our second action item, which is the temp, the, sorry, the murals. Um, they have the exact name, I just closed it up. Sorry, is it? Okay, and I'm just checking for any members of the public on, and we have no attendees, so let me just. Okay. So um, the Midtown Poetry Murals. Yes, which, which we and um, put in uh, another presentation. And we talked briefly yeah. about them during our retreat, yeah. but this is a time where we can hash everything out a little bit more. Absolutely. Um, so I'll be happy to present um, some background information as well as um, um, just considerations for the current con uh, condition of the murals and um, just open um, the floor for discussion. Okay. Sharing, um, I think it should come up on your scans at this point. Um, yep. So thank you so much. Um, okay, and I'm gonna switch to the next, move on to the next. Um, on screen. Okay, so um, some background for the um, for poetry um, wall murals. So this artwork was commissioned created in 2003 uh, uh, for the south wall um, of Walgreens uh, Pharmacy at uh, 2605 Middlefield Road. Um, so the project um, derived from um, a poetry competition and that was sponsored uh, by the Public Art Commission in 2003. Um, six uh, local finalists um, um, uh, were, um, uh, were laureates um, for the competition and, and they're actually people of all um, backgrounds and ages. Uh, for example, the first prize was um, given to Ron LeBlanc, who was, I believe, 67 at that time. Um, and also there were um, three elementary um, um, school students that <laughs> also um, were uh, they who, who shared uh, the second prize. Um, so Elizabeth Mittman, um, Amelia, um, Sabila Long um, were uh, two of those um, second prize um, winners. Um, other winners were Janice uh, Dabney, um, Dabney, Liz Cowie, and uh, Sharon Olson. Um, so the poetry um, that um, these people um, wrote um, was then designed into um, visual work of art by uh, former public art commissioners, Laura Deem and uh, Catherine um, Dunley. And also, um, and later painted by a local contractor, painting contractor. Um, funding for that project um, was provided by Public Art Commission and also um, supported with the funds donated by Village Properties. Um, moving on, uh, in 2012, um, the, mural, the mural was completely refurbished. And I do have some information about that process. Uh, so it was uh, completely repainted um, by the same contractor um, and um, it was painted with um, latex um, paint um, using, by using, with using stencils and um, uh, paint rollers. Um, later on, uh, four years later, we actually conducted um, comprehensive uh, condition um, review of all of the murals in our uh, collection, including um, the six um, 
murals by you know part of the uh, poetry wall project and um, so that conditioning report was um, conducted by ARG conservators in 2016. Um, so back then it was um, found by the by the conservators that um, the OD found some um, issues with um, the site, um, given that um, the mural was is painted was painted on the south wall of the building. Um, um, it's in the direct direct sun quite a bit, um, so th that really um, caused um, you know some fading and blanching um, of um, the mural surface. Also given that the, the choice for paint was latex um, paint um, and intrinsic um, issues with water within the wall um, that caused um, areas with water damage um, to like for the paint to bubble and peel off essentially and let me just show you some images so uh, you can see the um, you know some evidence of the water damage towards the bottom of that wall, right? And also, you know, areas where the mural appears um, kind of faded and blanched, you know? Um, so that is also caused, caused um, by, um, you know, just uh, aging of um, a clear UV um, clear coating. You know, over time when uh, um, clear coating starts um, disintegrating, often causes, you know, areas of um, like cloudy and blanched um, surfaces. Um, so, yeah, so overall and discoloration from um, exposure to UV light, heating and cooling from direct sun, as well as previous application of um, UV clear coating, extensive areas of paint loss and bubbling, water staining and streaks um, throughout probably due to issues with internal water damage. So of course, when we were on site um, earlier, earlier this summer in June, you know, we found these issues just in a greater degree. So these are some images, some close-ups. Um, so you can see that um, when the contractor repainted the mural, he um, they directly painted onto the existing mural, I'm not sure, whether the wall was prepped underneath um, the new application. Um, you know, the purple um, part of the mural sh shows clearly those areas of water damage and bubbling, um, uh, you know, um, fading rather, um, some areas with uh, complete loss um, of paint. So given the current state of um, the artwork, um, we are suggesting to explore two possible avenues. We, uh, the commission could uh, proceed with the repair of um, the existing mural. Um, we um, were able to obtain some preliminary quotes um, with, the, um, with the contractor, painting contractor. So, that um, job um, would amount to about $10,000. Um, having said that, we do need to look closely into the um, overall condition of the wall and probably um, um, gutters and just to understand whether what causes um, areas of the wall um, to be um, soaked. Also, another um, process, another avenue that the commission can explore um, is to direct staff to return uh, with a full report to initiate um, um, official deaccession process um, prior to commissioning a new mural at that site. As um, we discussed during the um, retreat, um, it's a really lovely site uh, in Midtown. Uh, you know, that wall has a lot of visibility. It's clearly loved um, by the community. Um, and whether the commission decides to, um, you know, refurbish, renovate um, the existing mural or explore commission a new artwork with a prior complete accession of the existing artwork, I think either option um, would result in you know, beautiful work um, of art in Midtown. 
So with that, I'm opening the floor uh, for discussion. Thank you so much. And let me know if you have any additional questions about my report. I do have a question. Tania, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, so the ten thousand dollars in repair. Um, how long would that so, um, the repair last? Um, and the question is, if it lasts for another five years, you know, then we're committing to this mural being there for another five years, right? Rather than like an opportunity for another um, right. artwork. Right. That's that's a really good question. I think it goes back to the um, idea that. Um, you know, considering murals as permanent um, um, projects um, is problematic, right? Um, unlike, um, you know, three-dimensional or maybe, um, um, you know, integrating to architecture um, of a building or site, you know, projects, murals, just the nature of materials, uh, you know, you know, depending on like particular qualities of a given site, uh, the lifespan of a mural, um, you know, realistically is much shorter. So I think, you know, the exact timeline would be, you know, to be determined, but given our previous experience, um, you know, um, probably, you know, say that 10 years would, that this repair would probably give us about up to 10 years with the existing artwork would be, you know, fair observation. Can I ask a question, um, Nadia? Yes, absolutely. Um, it looked from the images that you showed that when they did the first repair in 2012, that it wasn't an exact um, copying over. And so I'm wondering what that is mm -hmm. and if that might be another option is just a reinterpretation of um, the current content. Right, yes, um, Lisa, I also, um, um, Commissioner Walters, I also um, noticed that it, it seemed to me as the, um, you know, the, the um, plates, the imagery was kind of shifted down quite a bit from the original, um, you know, installation. Um, I know for a fact that you know, the painters used um, the same um, layout, the same stencil, but it was probably shifted down. And because, you know, we reviewed the materials for, you know, previous repairs and just background information. And, you know, we found some records that the painters indeed used um, the existing, existing, you know, previously um, created stencil. Okay. Um, and I believe Nadia too, it was the same contractor, right? Who did both the an yes. original and the repainting, right? Yeah. That seems right, yes. I mean, one, one very practical consideration is that um, as you put as one of the bullet points is that there's that wall is compromised right now with leaks and things. So what almost whatever we do that needs to be addressed. Like right. you can't just go and paint over it if it's going to continue to be damaged. Yes. So, so, it, so no matter what, there needs to be some investigation of the problems with the with the site. Exactly. I think it's really premature to say um, at this point, um, you know, on my part, on our part, that the wall is compromised. I think um, the site really deserves further um, investigation uh, and just uh, overall conditioning to um, determine, um, you know, just best ways of, um, uh, you know, citing, creating an artwork on that wall. Yeah, that, I mean, that almost needs to be the first step, no matter what. At this time, what is the property owner saying? Um, so we've been um, in touch uh, with um, the property management um, company um, who um, relate um, messaging um, to the owner. I think um, initially they are interested in um, preserving the existing mural. Um, but I think it's just early on in the conversation. So, you know, it, 
it's TBD. Because um, to recondition the wall, I think that is an expense that would probably fall on the property owner, correct? Um, yes. That's correct. So. Unless, would there be any situation in that um, because it is a site of a, a public art that the city would kick in money to re for the repairs? Well, um, I think um, in you know it's it's a different it's it's an interesting question because it's um, private property um, and it's it's um, an artwork that is in the city's uh, collection of art. Um, so we would really need to look into the um, previous uh, contract uh, with um, the property owner that was uh, put in place uh, back in 2013 and uh, probably work off um, you know, that existing agreement with the property owner. So um, I think we need to report back to you on, on that question with more detail. And I saw you with your hand up. Did you wanna have a, add a comment? I have a comment. Um, this is kind of a tough one for me, but but I, this has gone, this has been up for almost 20 years now. It's been repainted uh, 10 years ago, I guess, and then uh, been looked at again under that, uh, the report that was done by the uh, people that were, mm -hmm. yeah, to do ARG, to do that report. I, I, I feel that it's had a lifetime and we've got new paints and methods of doing things. And this, I think, would be a really good opportunity to put something else up in its place and possibly make it temporary, because as we know, murals aren't really permanent, um, and have a life of uh, maybe a year or two and, and keep going with that. Um, but I think the main thing is to get the wall stabilized so anything that is put up there will have a good life without us having to go back in and trying to do something repainting it or something when I think it's just kind of wasted money. So if we can do something right from the beginning to stabilize the wall mm -hmm. and then have some sort of temporary program mural that goes in there, I think that would, I think that would be the best interest of, of the commission uh, money-wise, especially. Thanks, that is, um, I can really actually. Yeah, that, that is a really good comment, uh, Commissioner Miyagi. And, you know, it's either, you know, like, you know, definitely further investigations into the existing condition of that wall um, is needed. Um, you know, having said that, there are different, um, you know, solutions now, um, you, you know, with installation of uh, murals. Um, you know, there are different substrates, um, for example, that can be, uh, you know, like a plywood sheeting or an aluminum sheeting, or, you know, there's um, this material called uh, parachute cloth that is installed onto substrate that not onto the um, wall, um, um, you know, directly. Um, so there is this, uh, you know, medium that, you um, protects the mural and um, it doesn't allow it to, you know, be impacted by, um, you know, the condition of um, the wall, the artwork is um, adhered to essentially. So um, we could definitely explore um, different uh, feasible um, solutions. Um, you know, of course, the property owner would need to be part of that conversation, you know, to understand what their uh, comfortable with and um, you know we need to understand sort of co cost implications um, for that but um, yes that's something we can definitely look into and and to add on to what Ben said and I Ben I completely agree again with all your um, thoughts and concerns is that you never know who's going to own the building <laughs> and who's going to be the property manager and I think that's another issue that we're very lucky we had the space to use, um, the canvas, so to speak. Um, and that could be taken away from us at any moment. And there could be a new person coming in who says, you know what, I don't want any 
art from you guys. I'll, we'll do our own thing and what have you. So it's something that I think it's a good, um, I don't know if we've ever had this type of, um, that in my, my term, um, this type of um, um, experience, let's put it that way. Um, and I think it's something that is, I think we should be thinking about, you know, long-term like Ben said, um, and just be more flexible. Um, and I think temporary is definitely the way to go. Um, but it would be interesting too, to see, you know, what the contract, if there's anything, um, like Nadia mentioned about um, how long um, they're willing to actually put stuff up. I mean, they obviously said they want to have work on their walls, but you know, maybe it is, you know, let's do it for five years, a temporary rotating exhibit of murals. And then after five or 10 years, what have you, they go back and re-examine everything and we do too. So we're not in a long-term contract. And Neil, you make a good point about the property owner. I don't think that's happened in Palo Alto, but other than, I know in other communities that's happened where somebody's bought a building, didn't like the, the mural that was on the building, they painted over. So I, I think that's a really good consideration to have as well. And um, to my understanding, you know, um, the um, Midtown uh, Business Association and the um, also, the, you know, the property um, owner very much interested in having artwork um, at that site. Um, I think that's a very important, um, you know, um, element to this opening discussion um, that, you know, art is really important um, to that community and that site. And I'll just say if the building owner, um, which we have a positive relationship right now, and if the building owner comes back and says, you have to work with as is conditions. I was just looking at the photographs again. Um, and not every part of that wall is compromised. So that's one thing that we can consider. Not it's a very long mural. I don't know if you guys know, but it goes sweeping across that whole wall into the parking lot behind the building. So you, from a certain angle, you can see the whole thing, but see tending the same, that last one, that's actually pretty far back um, in this parking lot area. So it could be that, um, you know, when we install a new mural, if that's the way we decide to go, um, the artist finds that the building isn't compromised everywhere and he or she could find an area that really works. And as Commissioner Waltich said on Friday, last Friday, um, there are new um, tools. I think in, uh, Commissioner Miyagi said that too, we have um, newer tools we can use for adhering things to buildings now. So we could be more creative and keep a positive working relationship with the owner without adding all this um, to their to-do list, fixing a, a wall that might not be their top priority. So I'll just throw that in there. Thank you. Thank you. And the other thing too, I was thinking a lot about is the work on the wall right now is pretty neutral in terms of content. Um, so I guess the other question I'm thinking about is the work, what would it look like? Obviously the artist and will there have to be some, <laughs> I hate to use the word stipulation, which we can't obviously use for artist calls, but will that be an issue that we have to think about the type, the content? Um, obviously we're very thoughtful. <laughs> Can you refer to um, but, how, um, you know, the poems are visually arranged? Um, across no. The world? Well, the, con the artwork, the, the content, um, is the poems, right? We cannot change the content. Uh, poetry is the artwork. Um, you know, to their visual arrangement, um, I would probably argue that was also um, part of the original content. So the overall visual, um, you know, piece. And I'm, you know, I, I'm not sure whether it would be um, right to, you know, change it visually if you're preserving this piece right right that's what you're saying if we're not going for the alternate yes. right yeah if i was or, if we are going to the alternate 
Um, yeah. So, but I, yes, I agree with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. If, yes, if we we're to save it, it should, it's going to be the same. Ultimately, the same. Same text. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We could. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was just that. thinking more on the other side. If we did decide to um, deaccession, and if they agreed to have new art in, um, you know what art that would be. Obviously, we we want I think murals are the best um, for this particular space. But you know, um, obviously, right, it's the property owner who has the ultimate say, ideally. And just to clarify this moment, um, you know, we're not um, asking you to make a decision whether to deaccession or not now, right? So part of the motion is to, uh, you know, direct uh, staff to um, come back to the commission with a full report to initiate the deaccession process, right? So um, right now we're just sort of, uh, we're talking about the route that you would like to take but you're not making a decision about deaccessioning the existing piece. Um, if you feel that this avenue is worth exploring, um, that would be the motion, you know, on direct staff to um, go back and present a full report for your, um, you know, for your official um, decision um, regarding um, whether to deaccession the existing piece or not. So Nadi, where um, in this was the talking to the property owners go? Um, right away. Okay, so that would be part of their full report to course, initiate the due session. Course. Okay, because I would love to know more. Yes. I don't, I'm sure other people have mentioned this too, that they want to know more about the building um, and the wall structure itself. Absolutely. We would okay. reach out to, um, um, you know, the, um, the artists, the poets, um, um, the uh, property building um, and management company just to initiate this comprehensive conversation and present it as part of the report to the commission. Okay. So I feel like there is a con kind of consensus that there's interest in murals on this building, but there are some defining questions that we need answered, um, like, you know, what the wall structure is and um, the the interest of the property owners and the long-term longevity of these potential murals, um, but that we are not really interested in repairing and repainting. Is that what I'm hearing properly? Um, I kind of feel like we don't have full information because um, it, it sounds to me like the, um, you know, the, the information about the repair is 10,000 that we know. Uh, we don't know how how long this repair will last, and the reason for that is because this repair is um, needs to be done in conjunction with some um, infrastructural, you know, change by the property owner. The way I'm understanding it. So, are you interested, though, ideally, in perhaps keeping the mural? For me, I kind of feel like we need to <laughs> we we. I think we, we should make the decision about whether or not to repair and repaint with full information, meaning that it, if the, the property, if the property owners, you know, let's find out what their plans are, right? Like if they're in the process of selling or whatever, like I think that's a, a good consideration to have. Um, but if they say, hey, you know what, we're here, we're committed to stay here for 10 years, and yes. If you want to repair, we will put in whatever is necessary to, to, to repair the building, right? To uh, stop the leaking issue. And mm -hmm. or if you want to um, put in the new mural, we'll also be supportive of that. I think that would be a good set of information um, because I think making the decision that the repair is not worth it, uh, I think we only understand one piece of what this ten thousand dollars would would will provide us, right? Like if if it's supported, I mean, I just feel like there's a, another piece of consideration that we don't have. I, I also think that along with that, you know, Nadia said to reach out that they're going to reach out to the the poets and the artists and and whomever. I mean they everybody may come back with a real emotional attachment like the the property owners could say 
we we love this mural we love this poetry we really we really want to keep it or the the poets themselves may say you know we don't want that taken down and that might have an emotional impact on us in our decision to de-access right. de accession it or not you know we right. we don't know everyone's feelings they may be over it or they may be completely attached right exactly i feel like it's 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 two consecutive decisions, but we need more information to eliminate this particular option. Well, I would think that the full report would include all that about repairing and repainting and also the, the uh, building owner and the artist. That would all include that. And that's how we could make our decision whether to start okay. the accession process. That is correct. And I should also add um, to your point, Commissioner Miyagi, that you know, as part of this initiation for the deaccession um, process, you know, we are obliged to um, proceed with a public notice and reach out to all those uh, parties involved, just like we did with our previous uh, deaccession processes, if you recall, and invite those, uh, all those parties involved to come to the Public Art Commission and address the commissioners um, in regards to this um, item. And based on all of those uh, reports, um, you know, testimonies and, um, um, you know, voices, uh, community voices, um, you would have a um, full picture to uh, make your final, to make a decision. Nadia, how many, um... I'm just seeing, do we have any other, well, as Ben kind of reiterated and reminded me that we probably don't have any other um, circumstances like this, but there might be one or two other bureaus that are on uh, private buildings that we might have to think about in the future, similar to this. I'm just thinking of the process. Um, right. And is this something we want to get ourselves stuck in? Um, no, because it's a every, lot of work. Every, every commission is unique in its, uh, you know, background and, um, uh, you know, like characteristics of site. I would say this is a one-off, very unique situation. Of course, we do have the triptych on Cal Ave, um, um, 341 California Avenue, but it's it's a very different situation. You know, the building um, just, I think, um, was um, purchased a few years ago. We worked with the new owners uh, mm -hmm. to build a case um, about the, uh, you know, um, the importance of these artworks um, in our collection in, you know, in general, um, the value of the works. Um, so I don't think we have similar precedents um, to kind of use as the blueprint for this project. Um, but, you know, we have strong policies in place that we can, um, you know, rely on. They, they've been, uh, um, you know, um, tested and tried with our previous um, deaccession processes and um, they're very just robust and, um, you know, I, I, would I have my total trust in um, the procedures and policies that we have in place. Great. So I think we, we should then move with doing asking the staff to do a full report that will include looking again at the repair and repainting of the mural um, and talking to the property owners and um, telling us more about the deaccession process. Is that fair? Uh, yes, I agree with that. Okay. Um, but one other thing, has the mural uh, ordinance or whatever we're calling it been finalized yet? No. no so this don't. would be a good opportunity to have input for this uh, on, on that mural part of, of the ordinance about public art. Mm -hmm. I think this would be a good opportunity for input for that. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I think um, so. Sort of the mural policy. At what point? Um, at what point uh, do we kick off a deaccession evaluation? Um, so, because I, I was kind of walking into this conversation thinking, if we're going down the path of deaccession, that means we have eliminated repair as an option. But what it sounds to me is when a when when it's a toss up, right? 
uh, when it's not clear that the investment in repair and maintenance is going to yield the, um, the ultimate uh, benefit. And, um, and so when we're making decisions between two kinds of investments, either it doubling down on the yeah. maintenance and repair or investing in a new commission. And that is when it's not so clear, that is when we do the deaccession evaluation, like a comprehensive evaluation comparing the two options. Right. That's what it sounds to me like. Um, yes, Commissioner Shen, you make a good point. And um, actually the, the, you know, the points that you make, um, the, uh, um, the deaccession, <clears throat> deaccession in, uh, policy that we have in place addresses um, those considerations um, and issues. Okay. Um, and um, I uh, am happy to, um, you know, forward you um, a copy of our decessioning policy. So you just, um, just you know, have a refresher. And, oh, um, okay, okay. Um, so it, that it, does it, make it sense. Outlined, okay, I think that makes sense now. Yeah, the process and all, um, you know, um, criteria and considerations that would need to be uh, um, considered part of, um, you know, just in, in throughout this process. Okay, thank, thank you for clarifying. Yeah. I, I think it makes sense now. So, so the, um, the logic is we're looking at this evaluation and we're evaluating this opportunity and it's not clear to us that this option is the ultimate, uh, is the best investment for resources, whatnot. So we kick it off to a deaccession evaluation to see if all stakeholders involve people um, opt for one option versus the other. Yes, based on this okay. initial report, um, you know, brought to the commission, you will be able to determine whether this piece um, qualifies, um, you know, could be the accession indeed for, you know, reasons stated in the report, or, you know, it, could, it should not be the accession and should be refurbished. Got it. Thank One you other so much. question. This is really helpful. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Shen. One other question too I had um, is in terms of like the colors of the paint and things like that, is that easy to replicate? Oh yes, absolutely. Okay. We have um, detailed records of all color codes and palettes. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Okay, any other last minute questions, comments, thoughts? I'd like to make a motion. Fantastic. Can we get a okay. second? Uh, what's the motion, Ben? Uh, the motion, motion is that staff return with a full report to include all those things that we discussed, the property man, uh, property owner, the artist, the uh, materials, the stabilizing of the wall, all that stuff to, uh, to initiate the deaccession process okay. prior to commissioning a new mural at the site. And I, and I think that full report is really going to be what guides us one way or the other. Right. Thanks, Ben. Can I get a second? Second. Great. And we'll do our roll call. So Commissioner Miyagi? Yes. Commissioner Shen? Yes. Commissioner Waltuck? Yes. Vice Chair Gordon? Yes. And Chair Taylor? Yes. Great. Thank you, everyone. I'm looking forward to our next steps. Thank you. Okay, and last on our agenda is a non-action item for temporary murals at the Public Safety Building. Um, yeah, uh, safety building construction plans. Um, I promise I'll be much faster with this item. I wanted to share some really exciting um, images with you. So, um, yeah, so today was, uh, we had a really fun day. We, um, we installed um, half a mile of um, artwork um, at the site of the um, future public safety, uh, public safety building. Um, so the, the um, four murals will wrap um, uh, around uh, 900 linear feet of um, the uh, plywood uh, fencing. So today we're on site at six o'clock in the morning um, to um, set up, um, you know, traffic control um, signs and uh, ensure, you know, we do not impede uh, with, um, you know, just construction uh, vehicles and, um, you know, community um, members trying to um, get by. 
and install fast and efficient. So we were, we were able to install two out of four murals today. Um, everything is moving according to our plan. And let me just uh, share some yummy visuals with you. I'm just gonna share our um, you know, um, Instagram page instead of putting everything to yet another presentation. So here we are. Wow. Um, um, so right now you're looking at images um, from, <clears throat> you know, um, uh, detailed views uh, from Abi Mustafi's um, mural um, in your garden. It's a really beautiful, happy piece um, depicting, um, you know, beautiful smiling faces, um, you know, people from Palo Alto and Bay Area community. Um, so the, this work um, is installed on um, the wall along um, Park Boulevard. So it would be between um, Sherman Avenue and Jacaranda Lane. Absolutely gorgeous mural. That's beautiful. It is stunning. Wow, nice work. Look at that. Um, it is installed it is on so um, wonderful vinyl. wonderful to see people's faces. Yes, it's 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 so lovely. It's really happy. People really loved it when they saw it today. So the mural is actually installed not on in adhesive uh, vinyl as we did it uh, last time around mm. with the garage, but it's a, it's a thicker, more robust, um, you know, vinyl that was actually stapled um, to, um, oh, wow. you know, you know, essentially stitched to the plywood. So it will, you know, it will be more robust. You know, we would like to keep it there for um, up to a year. And then next summer we'll have oh, wow. a new round of, um, you know, four uh, murals uh, by another four Bay Area artists. But, you know, I was really pleased with the quality of the print and just, just you know, be the beauty of the artworks. So this is New Garden by Abi Mustafa. And let me introduce the other mural. It's very different in character. It's very whimsical and funny. Um, so this piece is uh, by um, Alameda um, artist Jessica um, Eastburn. It's called Busy Business. And essentially, she kind of reinvented um, California Avenue District as um, this uh, whimsical, you know, um, kind of like um, cartoon world. It's, the details are hilarious, you know. So um, California Avenue is Cauliflower Avenue, and there are all these funny uh, animals roaming around, you know, like rushing to the, you know, in the business, you know, to local stores and restaurants. Uh, it really draws on the existing, um, you know, the existing culture of Calav, the existing businesses, restaurants, and, um, you know, some iconic stores and whatnot. And kind of, you know, also um, plays on the um, the past of the area, you know, um, just the, the live concerts, you know, all this great live music that was um, part of um, Calav Canvas. And, re you know, Jessica reinterpreted into this. Um, a really fun work. So the rabbit walking into saloon is a nod to, you know, um, Mayfair, and I think it's what twelve or thirteen um, saloons along, um, you know, the main streets. So it really touches on a lot of um, really unique and iconic features of Calav. So these are two works that we installed today, and to be continued tomorrow. We'll be back. Um, on Calav at six o'clock in the morning. We have two more works um, to install. Um, uh, Night and Day by uh, uh, Liv. Um, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. I've been up since 5 a.m. I forget her last name. So, um, you know, it's going to be a night, night and Day mural on Bird Street and also uh, another um, pretty long, um, I think 63 panel mural by Deborah Kaufman on Jacaron the Lane. We'll install um, interpretive signage for each of the murals, which will have um, embedded QR, QR codes. Um, so any viewer can, you know, um, just scan the code and get all this additional information about the artworks, artist statements, you know, some detailed images and artist websites. 
um, or just you know to view the murals um, just virtually from you know, the uh, convenience of their couch in the living room where where else. So this is my report for the, the temporary murals. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, please. Thanks, Nadia, they're beautiful. And I'll say, Lauren, thank you. You are on the panel, right? Um, we had so much talent to choose from. How lucky that we have that kind of um, response to our calls. So it was a lot of fun, yeah. Good. Yes, I really want to give a shout out to, you know, the um, the artists um, who we work with, um, you know, they worked under really tight deadlines and actually um, they're asked to um, design and produce art files um, within a month. It's, you know, it's a really tight schedule, and given especially it's summer, it was just before, you know, the 4th of July, you know, weekend and everybody was absolutely fantastic, uh, you know, to work with. Um, so yeah, it's been a really um, just a pleasure, you know, just a great experience. And nothing like our team of Nadia to be up at five in the morning and on site by 6.30. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Yeah. We are so appreciative and I'm, I'm sure it was fun to see those go up. Thank you. Now, um, Nadia, I will ask you one quick question. Have we had any issues with tagging of the temporary murals or we've been lucky? Uh, the eight temporary murals that we installed earlier? No, none. Um, you know, Wonderful. People just, I, I think we, we, we always get so many, you know, positive um, comments and just great feedback overall. Uh, and I feel like community is just really um, looking after those. Um, in general, we're very fortunate, you know, issue of tagging graffiti is um, not huge um, in Palo Alto. And um, whenever um, it happens, you know, we always try to address it pretty quickly. Sometimes we get a call, you know, an email from, you know, a member in our community just saying, hey, I'm not sure if you saw, but there is a tag. And we just um, go address it. So no, um, good. No <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, they're beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Well, we're almost done. I think this might be a record setting meeting. Um, so let's go on to announcements. Anybody have any announcements that they'd like to make or share? No. Okay. And our next regular meeting for the PAC is Thursday, September 16th at seven o'clock. I have a question about that meeting. And this is more for Kristen, I believe. Uh, there's a executive order that suspends part of the Brown Act until September 30th, mm -hmm. and that's set to expire. Um, I know there's a couple of bills in the legislature now to make virtual meetings a permanent thing. Do you have any insight or anything you can tell us about that or October we'll be back meeting in person. Yeah, that's a great um, question. Um, and no, I don't have an answer. I haven't heard, you know, from our legal team if they have any inside um, knowledge on where we might be headed. I would hope and expect that we can continue with the virtual meetings. I know we were going to switch our council meetings to a hybrid and paused a little bit, um, partly because it's really complicated to do an in-person virtual hybrid public meeting. Um, the logistics involved are really difficult. Um, and so we're one hoping that we can just continue this format. And I think it actually works really well. And I think in a lot of cases, especially at council meetings, we've gotten a lot more participation from the community um, in those meetings. So I, if I hear anything, I'll let you know. And I'll actually um, reach out tomorrow to our city attorney's office and see if they know anything. So thanks for bringing that up. It's an important topic. I know. I agree with you. <laughs> Is there a workaround there where we can all um, meet Lisa in person? <laughs> <laughs> that is an interesting question, Mia, because if it, everything is virtual, then I 
I guess we could gather but not discuss business. Right. We did that for um, a okay. holiday party or something. Okay. So hypothetically, we could. We just have to make sure, you know, Nadia and um, Elise are there just to keep tabs. No shop talk. <laughs> no um, talk. What, what about code art? Because um, that's coming up that we're all going to be in person, right? Yeah. So can we talk about that? It's not a meeting. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a meeting. So we, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but but we are going to be there, right? I mean, in person. observing. Commissioners of people, they're allowed to. Yeah, yeah. it's more of a social meeting. Social. Than, exactly. Yeah. Than a, a meeting of the commission. Yeah. Actually, I do have a question about that because um, from the offsite, we, we left, there was some, things that we were going to sign up for or we were going to be assigned is that upcoming or yes yes i apologize for the delay in um getting um some you know sign up sheets and documents to you We're, like really preoccupied um this week um with the upcoming mm -hmm. being stall and actually lisa's out of town this um you know this week but we will definitely follow up um with all the information that we promised you next okay. week all right. thank you <laughs> Very nice meeting. Yeah. Well, thank Jared, you all. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. And have a wonderful evening. And thank you all again for all your wonderful thoughts and comments and our hard work. We're a great team. So I'm excited to continue our three priorities for the year. Yeah. So, okay. Have a good evening, everyone. Thanks. Thanks have a good one. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night. Thank you, everybody.